Hey guys, what's up? So this is going to be my first uh, analysis video that I do and I'm going to do all the highlights from PMGC day one. Uh, these are my personal picks for highlights. I might have missed some of your favorite moments and with how many games are being played each day, I'm sure I missed one or two. Uh, you can drop it in your comments if you want me to look over something in particular. But I'm going to do uh, mine and we have quite a few to go through and I'm going to start from map number one all the way through to map number six. And so it's gonna be in order. And yeah, let's just get straight into it. Okay, so the first one we're gonna be looking at is um, match number one, Aaron Gell, right? Uh, we saw Gonzo almost sell a squad early on. And I believe that starts, uh, I have everything time stamped. And so this was a uh, think about where edge just that part of the advantage right? So this was like the very first fight in PMGC. <clears throat> and the way when I saw this happen, Zeus definitely studied a Kanino Power's drop spots and their split and they knew this guy was going to be here. Um, just like how fast their aggression was, they were looking to pick up a free kill point, but Gonzo played this so well. Right. It gives you so much So driving in Gonzo manages to hear the cars coming in and he jumps out the window. Luckily for him, he was close to the window and he jumps out and he does not make a step. The other players didn't hear him hop out the window because they were driving in the cars. And so Gonzo played this so perfectly well and he picks up, I believe, he picks up like one kill and a second knock and he almost gets the third guy too. He's fighting his time. The rest of his squad is not quite near So yeah, he's not making a noise. That's super important. And there he picks up the first one, goes for the instant thirst. Uh, I don't know why the screen is doing that. Let's turn it down a little bit, hopefully. Yeah, and that drop shot was really good. Gets the third player down to half HP. So I like the fact he went for the thirst. He knows he's by himself. Uh, he played that as best as he could. Yeah, just hop out, don't make a noise, and just Play really patient. Up next, we have uh, the one of Nova player getting knocked, and they actually uh, managed to revive him, and they get he got knocked by R Q. Now this one, I want to point out something. It's the way Nova goes about reviving this player. So right here, okay, you see three players: Order, Jimmy, and King. Right, uh, Paraboy actually gets caught out. I think he's like switching his car for a buggy. I'm not sure what the case case is. But he gets caught out, and RQ manages to get a knock on him. And I thought Paraboy was not revivable, but Nova go back and try and go for the revive. And the way they did this was done really well. <clears throat> so Paraboy is knocked here. And let me pull up a map. And I'm gonna basically first show you guys how uh, Nova decided to recover Paraboy here. And let's see. Okay, making sure everything looks good. Okay, so this one, Paraboy, let's zoom out just a little bit. Okay, there we go, all right. So this one was pretty impressive. Uh, it was definitely risky, but uh, so Paraboy gets knocked right around here. And RQ, let's have them in green. They're set up up here. So RQ could see all of this, right? RQ has full control. And so what uh, Nova does is the first person they send over does obviously, the you cannot stop on Paraboy, drop a smoke, and then try and go for a revive. Um, their RQ is just going to push you, and then, or you're just going to get spammed through the smoke, and it's going to be over. So RQ, or Nova does this very smart. The first guy they send over, they post them up on this hill. <clears throat> so no one's over here, otherwise Paraboy would have gotten thirsted, so they know this is clear. So the first person they do, they send over here, they set up an overwatch. Now it's really important, when you're picking up a revive, you do not go for the revive first. Always make sure you have someone covering the revive and covering a push 
or covering any enemies shooting at the knocked player um, so they don't get a thirst. So this spot is really good. He gets a hill, and this hill basically controls all of this. So all of this area is in control of Nova once he gets there. And you saw RQ try and get the thirst by sending one player over here. But as soon as that Nova player got the hill, he can no longer go there, and it forced him to go back. And so first they send a player, the first player they send over does not go for the revive, sets up cover. So step one, set up cover, provide overwatch, do not go for the instant revive. After he gets here, then their second player drives over, drops down some smokes, and then they go for the revive. It's still a pretty risky revive. If RQ really wanted to, they could full commit. They could send three players up here, isolate this one player, and then if they did that, you're going to see what I like to call a fast-paced chess match. Every time we see two Chinese teams go against each other, uh, it happens really quickly. Uh, what would happen, in my mind, if they send three here, this player is going to hold this spot down. This revive player is going to get off the revive and immediately come here. And then they're just going to go back and forth, back and forth to try and get positioning. But that's not what happened. Uh, I just want to point out that could be what happened if RQ decided to full commit. But RQ had a really good position. Zone was about to shift. So RQ, you know, uh, decided to, hey, let's just prioritize zone. It's not worth it to try and just pick up this one kill point. So we're going to go back here and we're going to play the situation out for you guys. So here comes Nova King. He does not stop for the revive. He pulls up to that hill and you see this player, D2E. He was about to pull up here to Thirst Paraboy, but right when King gets up there, D2E can no longer be on that hill safely. <clears throat> and see, they call it out. One person's already set up to cover. D2E, you gotta come back. And see, King's already there providing cover. Paraboy is now secured. King drops a smoke. He's gonna hold that position. And here comes the third player. Um, I forgot who they sent. Jimmy. Here comes Jimmy. Jimmy, he doesn't just stop on him. Jimmy stops behind cover, throws down additional smokes to make sure it's more safe, and then goes for the revive. And I love how Nova leaves one player in zone order to secure a spot in zone uh, to make sure they don't full commit four people to just saving one person, right? This job requires two people at most, one covering, one reviving, and that's all they sent. Their fourth player, still in zone, holding a good spot. So that was really nicely done. Um, a less experienced team could easily just let Paraboy die, or a less experienced team could have easily gotten you know, the whole squad wipe trying to do, do the save. And you can still see it's really risky, but Nova played this as best as they could to go for that revive, and they stopped D2E from posting up and securing a thirst. All right, next up we have... Um, Skipping to the end of the game, uh, old boy doing a nice prone spray, and he does this in two different uh, on both Aaron Gale games. So this one, <clears throat> towards the end of the game, uh, one thing I want to know: Hasaki actually did a really good peek. I didn't even notice this at first, but I had to watch it back. Hasa uh, old boy, I don't want to say he got lucky, but Hasaki got unlucky, and old boy did get kind of lucky, but. Old boy's prone behind this tree, and he's not on either side of it. He's prone, he's prone directly behind the tree, like in full cover. And uh, I think old boy shot earlier, and his teammate uh, or somebody called out, he's at this tree right here. So Hasaki actually does a really good peek. Hasaki shoots the left of the tree, and then he shoots the right of the tree. It just so happened old boy was in the middle and right when Hasaki starts shooting the right of the tree, old boy prones over to the left of the tree and shoots Hasaki back. So I want to point out what Hasaki did, though. It looks like Hasaki just got knocked for free. But if you were to ever try and shoot at an enemy that's prone, that you can't see, that you know is behind some sort of cover, the way Hasaki did it is nearly perfect, right? Um, the only thing Hasaki could have done better is lean peek out a little bit so he's less exposed but that's about it and even then old boy would probably get the knock on Osaki because old boy's shooting uh, right next to the rock so 
Let's play this back real quick. So I'm going to slow this down. So if you're ever in a situation, you know a player is behind a tree or some type of rock, but you can't see him because he's prone, shoot the left and then shoot the right, right? You want to clear out the sides. So if you're peeking out from the left, right, you want to clear out the left side of the tree first, and then you shoot the right. <clears throat> so taking a look at a Hasaki here. And I have this video clip slowed down a little bit. You see Hisaki shooting the left, and then he shoots the right, and then that's right when Old Boy peeks out and gets him. Old Boy does get traded, though. So Hisaki did a really good job of doing that, but uh, Old Boy, <clears throat> uh, what Old Boy does is when he's getting shot at, or when he knows there's an enemy behind a certain cover, and he's prone, all you got to do is scope in your crosshair right next to where that cover sticks out, because that's where the player is going to be peeking out, and you shoot. And Old Boy actually does this twice on a later Arangel match and clutches a 1v2 situation. So up next, I think we're going straight into the next highlight on the next game. 4AM do end, end up winning the first game. They did a really good job. Uh, the next one is BTR versus Nova. And on Arangel, or Miramar, I'm sorry. Uh, so this next one... This next one was a really close fight. And it was a really important fight, too. Who's going to be able to surge into the lead? That's what we're hearing now. Alpha 7 still continues to prove troublesome for anybody who dares step foot onto this hill. Very, very difficult fight for both these. Okay, so this fight, this fight right here was super important. Um, and the importance of this fight is the difference in amount of points that each team got. If BTR killed Nova here, they would instantly grab a lot of points later on. If Nova killed BTR, which they did, Nova picked up a lot of points. Uh, so this fight, it was just basically a back and forth. Who could hit their shots more? But Nova did have a slight advantage that BT with the zone shift, BTR had to push them. And then Nova also used every little advantage possible. So let's play this out. So right here, 4v4, both teams just nading each other, shooting each other through the smokes, and you can see, uh, let's turn this down a little bit, and you can see both teams getting super lit. Pearboy actually gets knocked here, and it's a 4v3 right now, and I think this is where BTR kind of messes up, right? Zone has already shifted. BTR should have called, we have to push, we have to kill them. Uh, BTR should have pressured immediately, right now, right then. But with all the chaos and stuff, even a few seconds indecision or like trying to figure out what to do, uh, basically BTR lost this advantage they had by uh, knocking Paraboy. And so, <clears throat> I like what Nova does here. So, what Order does here is really smart. Uh, I'm pretty sure Nova knows it's going to be a 4v4 with his team, BTR, over here. Uh, but what Order does, he leaves the fight, right? So you're thinking, like, a three, he leaves his team to 3v4. Uh, Nova could get wiped here, and then uh, Order could have been there to help to make it a 4v4. Well, what happens a lot of times in these late-game situations is if... All four members stay and commit to this fight, right? And BTR also commits to this fight, which they do. And the trades go in BTR's favor, or it's an even trade. What ends up happening is both teams end up just killing each other on the outside of the next circle, and both teams die. We see that happen a lot in PMGC, where it's a 4v4, zone shifts away from both teams, and both teams, you know, have to try and fight each other. And each person, each team, all four of them commit. They fight each other. Blue zone comes in. It goes down to a 2v2. Both players are in blue zone. They are still fighting each other. And then they both die to blue zone. So what Order does here is really smart. He leaves the fight to get a spot in zone. And right now, with this 3v4, all Nova's job is now, with these three players, is to make sure... They stall BTR long enough to make sure they don't get into zone with order safely, right? 
Nova can lose this fight 3v4, but if they stop BTR and stall them outside in blue zone long enough so that all of BTR ends up dying to zone, then they did their job. So let's play this fight out. So you see earlier I said BTR, you know, they messed up. They let, you know, Paraboy get revived. Well, BTR still reacted really fast. Like BTR is pushing right now and Paraboy is not fully revived yet. So like they like stopped and stalled like BTR, like didn't know what to do immediately for like two to three seconds. But right like after two to three seconds, BTR is pushing. So they did recognize this really fast. It just, you know, every little second counts. So, Paraboy gets revived. BTR is forced to push in one direction. And King does a really good job here. So, immediately, Nova, even though it's a 3v4, they have a slight advantage by spreading out in a line like this. Right? If all three of them were down here, anybody spraying through the smoke can get some lucky shots. But what Nova does is they spread out in a diagonal like this. So it means BTR has to shoot left, they have to shoot top right, and then they have to shoot in the middle. So BTR's focus is all over the place, whereas all of Nova, they are just shooting back into BTR in one direction, making it a lot easier for Nova to you know, train their fire and win the fight, which they do. So see, Zuxi's shooting down to the left, he gets shot top right. Ryzen gets knocked, two go down. And it's just Paraboy speaking from the left, Jimmy's speaking from the top right, Luxie and Microboy in the back has to shift their focus from top right to bottom left, and so it's just, you know, it's really hard for them to know where they're gonna, where Nova's gonna peek from. So Luxie, you know, last alive, he's gotta go over, and King knows it. King, really good 1v1 right there. And so, yeah, uh, crucial fight. Now, what I want to show you guys is, uh, so Abrupt Slayers end up winning this match, but let me show you the difference in points. Uh, where is the points? Uh, points comes up at 327, 22. Okay, so the difference in points is huge here. Let me uh, pull it up like this. Okay, you guys can see everything. Um... Oh, earlier, could you guys see the fight itself? Let's go back real quick. Let me double check. I am recording this. I think my face cam might have been in the way. Okay, slightly in the way. Okay, that's fine. All right. Before I review the next clips, I'll double check to make sure. Alright, so here. Uh, <clears throat> so Nova ended up getting six placement points that match and eight kills, giving them a total of 14 points, right? That one fight decided, you know, basically, because Nova right afterwards just died. But they managed to get six placement points and eight kill points. Uh, four onto BTR, and they picked up four earlier. Uh, but look at BTR. One placement point and one kill point gives them two points. So if BTR won that fight, which it was a really, really close fight, it could have gone either way, BTR would have picked up at least <clears throat> uh, five kill points there, right? And let's say they go out exactly where Nova did, which is where they were going to head to. They would have also got six points. They would have got a total of 11 points. But because they lost that fight, which was a really close fight, they only got two points. That's a nine-point difference. So, like, a lot of times in these competitive games, you see some teams do, like, really bad in a match. But it literally sometimes just comes down to that one fight. In that one fight, if they win that fight, they get so many more points. And right here, you see the situation. Nova and BTR. It was a difference between two points for BTR and potentially 11 points for BTR. So these team fights are really crucial. All right, we're going to go into the next one. 
Um, next one is going to be Vakendi. So solo pressure. Uh, so this one was really nice. Okay, this one, you guys can't really see the map. Okay, uh, map's not too important here. Actually, oh. Let's move my face cam higher up. Sorry, I'm adjusting this on the fly. Okay, all right. So uh, here we, we want to focus on power triple eight. So if you guys notice on the bottom left, right, down here, power triple eight, uh, they're, they're doing a one three split. It's a really good split uh, because this one player can put out so much pressure from such a good spot that it completely pushes any team coming from the blue towards another direction completely. So you see here, <clears throat> he knocks Savano, and this ends up getting Savano killed too in the kill feed, because the blue zone is just too strong, he ends up dying. So you see, he gets that knock, and then he does a smart thing, and he just leaves. If this power triple eight member wasn't here, all four power triple eight would be at this compound down here. And that basically would potentially, what might happen is 4 a.m., you know, they pull up here, they heal up, and then they take his position right here, right? And then they plan a push into zone. And if you look at the zone here, um, did I have a screenshot saved of this? No, I did not. Okay, so let's do a quick screenshot. So, if that power triple eight member was not there, uh, there is no way for me to make this smaller, unfortunately. That will have to just stay there. Okay. Um, so, power triple eight, one of their guys was right up here. So, if they put all four right here, what could have happened is 4 a.m., you know, they come in from the top. They stop, let's change colors. They stop uh, up here for free because that power triple A guy isn't there. And they have cover there too. They're, they have rocks, they have those ridges that you just saw. So all 4 a.m. would be there and then all power triple A will be here. And then from this position, 4 a.m. can see a lot of what's in the next zone, right? They have clear vision of everything. And when a team has information, especially a team as good as 4 a.m., they will break it down and see, okay, there's a team here, we could push them like this, we could set up this way to get in front of them in zone, or, you know, like, you've seen 4 a.m. do edge plays all the time, and they are so strong and good at it. But that one power triple eight member playing back there on the top, getting that knock, it slows everything down for 4 a.m. And 4 a.m. no longer can push that way because they're worried about getting shot at to push up to that spot. So this one play by that one power triple eight member could have changed a lot, you know? Like if he was with his team, four people at the house, 4 a.m. could have pushed from behind them, killed them, and then who knows what 4 a.m. might have done like after that. So let's go back to the game here. And then the other thing I want to point out, uh, oh, another important thing is BTR. Okay, so I want you guys to notice this. So BTR, BTR went out really early this game, like extremely early, and they missed a huge opportunity because they didn't prioritize rotations. Um, the zone was about to shift, right? Actually, the zone just shifted. Let's bring this back up a few seconds. Okay, notice this. 
So this actually costs BTR quite dearly. Uh, so this, this is actually really important, how important prioritizing rotations is. So here's a zone, right? Circle's about to shift. Let's take a look at uh, what is open. So BTR is over here. And DA, DA is doing a split, right? Digital athletics is here and here. And BTR from that green marker position, I played that spot before, you could see this compound. Uh, I'm trying to draw better. You can see that compound that Digital Athletics is at. Uh, so somebody should be scouting you know, that side and paying attention, especially when zone's about to shift, they should be paying attention of like, if that team moves or not, or if that team sits and stays there, and where it could, they could go next. So what ends up happening, and this wasn't caught on stream, but yet, so you have to pay attention to the, the map. So zone pops. You see it right here. The zone pops here, and watch digital athletics. These two players, they get in their car, and they're leaving. So this is as pay attention to the mini map. So see, at this point, everybody's rotating. Digital Athletics, they rotate to group up with their team. They have a better spot here, and they end up winning the game for it, too. And Abrupt Slayers, zone shifts, they're going to start rotating. Abrupt Slayers ends up rotating into BTR, and BTR, like, they pick up a few kills on Abrupt Slayers, but instead of uh, prioritizing rotation, right, if they had one player just watch Digital Athletics, they would have seen Digital Athletics leave that compound, and they could just ignore Abrupt Slayers, get in their car, and just leave and go into zone. But what ends up happening is, if we keep it playing, see, now uh, right here, Digital Athletics is gone. BTR in a fight with Abrupt Slayers, and it looks like they're fully committed. And we're just watching the mini-map here. So right here, BTR, they're in their cars now. They killed two of Abrupt Slayers, I think. Let's see, Abrupt Slayers, yeah, two of Abrupt Slayers pulled up. BTR got picked up two kill points. Now BTR is in their car, and they're going to try and rotate. But because they missed that opportunity, look at a footballist. Footballist down over here. <clears throat> they're going to beat BTR to that spot. And the mini map is gone. We're going to skip ahead a little bit. And so now this is footballist in the corner. And BTR, they didn't have that spot open for free anymore. And, and there's a good chance BTR didn't even know that spot opened up. Because uh, all four of the members were focused on killing abrupt slayers. That whoever was in charge of looking over there didn't see the cars leave. So now BTR, you know, late on rotation because they were, they were fighting uh, Abrupt Slayers and it wasn't like a fight they had to take. It was only two of them. There. And BTR gets wiped out. And that's huge because let's look at where Footballist is here. So in red, I'm going to draw what happens. So... Abrupt Slayers, right? Uh, let me see if I can do this. Okay, this, this works better. Okay, so Abrupt Slayers, they send two to scout, and they end up fighting BTR, so BTR and them are fighting. Take a look at where Footballist is at this point. Footballist, Lux is here scouting, and the rest of Footballist is all the way over here. So... With that zone shift, BTR has priority over this spot. And BTR is also already set up to get info on that spot. Whereas football is, they're all the way down here in the south, and they don't have information. So they're going to be taking their time to like scout things out. Uh, so yeah, this was a really big like deciding point in the game for BTR. 
if they just prior, prioritize that rotation, they would have been in a way better spot as a four man too. Um, So let me back up a little bit. Okay, yeah, so football is... They've taken that high ground over there. That should have been where BTR is. And off of that, football is, you know, that zone shifts again. And then, so footballists were at that point forced to push Team Secret when the zone shifted again. So this could be our IQ. Or, I mean, this could be BTR right now, if they took that spot instead up here. And I, BTR is a really strong team, and they might have been, you know, had a better chance at fighting Team Secret and taking Team Secret out here. So let's go ahead and see the amount of points each team got. So right here, uh, Footballist ends up getting five points, right? Four placement points, one kill point. And BTR, they sacrifice all those placement points and they picked up three kill points, so they only get three points. Uh, versus, you know, they could have been in footballist position, gotten more placement points, and you never know how strong BTR is. If you give them a fighting chance, like the way footballist had in that last zone, pushing Team Secret, uh, BTR might have won that and then gotten even more points. So that was really important for them to prioritize rotations over, you know, getting distracted by fighting. Uh, teams unnecessarily. Okay, up next, um, we actually have three games left, and I'm going to post a, the second video, part two. Uh, depending on how, mu how much you guys like this, I still have a Arangel game left where I just focus purely on 4AM. They have the most insane rotations. Um, I had a Sandhawk game, a uh, quick few lessons on Sandhawk that I saw after I analyzed it, and the last Arangel game where 4AM got the chicken dinner again, uh, great plays, and I analyzed some amazing stuff there too. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you like this, and leave some comments. Uh, tell me what you guys want to see more of, if you guys like this uh, style of analysis, or if you guys want to see something else in particular. So let me know. Thank you guys for watching. And down below, you see my socials on my Instagram, my Twitter, uh, YouTube, or you guys are watching on YouTube right now. But yeah, make sure you follow me on there. Thank you guys for watching. And this is my first ever video. So it's a little bit uh, rough. It's not super like polished, you know? I don't have fancy intros. I don't have fancy graphics yet, but I hope you guys like it. So thank you guys all and um, take care.